The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hello, everybody. Welcome to our Brusa introductory webinar number four, which we talk about the hardness, the power of charts. Okay. Today, we are very excited to invite Ken Chow, invest to join us uh, to share with you how we can use technical analysis to make better trading decisions in the stock market. Ken, very nice to have you here. Hi. All right. So, Hi. yeah. So, this is Ken from us. Uh, and uh, as usual, if you can hear me clearly, please uh, click the control panel, put up your hands, okay? If you can hear me clearly, go to the control panel of the webinar software and click put out your hand right now. Okay, let me see how many of you can hear us. All right, thank you. I'm seeing your hands right now. You may put down your hand. Thank you so much. All right, so today we have a very big crowd uh, joining us online and uh, some of you are, are all over Malaysia and we are very excited to share with you how you can time the, the market using technical analysis. And today, the introductory webinar will cover really basic on how we can use charts such as support resistance, uh, such as how to see the market structure and uh, where you can possibly put a buy or sell entry. Okay, so uh, as usual, disclaimer. So whatever we do today on the, this Bursa webinar series is only for educational purpose. In no way that we give you any buy or sell to any security. So in, in the event that you want to buy or sell any stocks, you do it at your own risk. Is that okay? Now, uh, today this uh, series is brought to you by Bursa Malaysia and uh, 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 managed by LiveChat. And we are on the fourth series, which is the last introductory webinar series for this year. So we hope to bring you more for next year. So stay tuned for our next year uh, webinar series. And let me introduce our speaker today. And uh, Ken um, graduated with a bachelor's of engineering in electrical and electronic engineering from Utah. Okay, uh, but after serving the industry for a couple of years, so he decided that he is more passionate about the investment. So he decided to shift entirely to investment education since 2011. So he has about seven years of experience educating people in stock investing okay he's also helped to co-founded um, winvest global in 2013 and he's currently served as an investment coach and creator of the winpro investment education program and he's the research guy he's responsible in finding investment and trading opportunities for the winvest members so he specializes in using techno fundamental analysis approaches so if you want to Connect with him, you can find him on Facebook by, by Elias uh, W.V. Kenchow. Yes, correct. That's how we can connect with you, right? Yes, correct. Excellent. Mm. Okay, so uh, can you tell us initially, like, uh, uh, how, why is it important for us to learn about chartings? Well, uh, chartings, from the chart, you can see uh, unique, uh, the price, the chart is quite important if you are doing technical analysis. All right, so, um, so why the chart is so important? Okay, yeah. so in fundamental analysis, financial statement is like uh, piece of a puzzle uh, a piece of a dynamic puzzle, okay? So it's crucial for the fundamental guide to gauge uh, The price is going up or going down. Okay. So, um,
Next is it? Yeah. So uh, beside that, uh, you will see um, normally when you see the chart, you will see a different kind of charts. We call it uh, time intervals. Okay. So uh, you can see this uh, on the screen. Uh, on the left side, there's one chart stating it is from daily chart. Okay. For stock X, Y, Z. And the other one is the weekly chart, the stock XYZ as well. But you can see both charts looks different. Okay. But if you see the highlighted uh, highlighted area, okay, on the daily chart, it's basically the same as the left side, the weekly chart, the uh, highlighted area. Okay. So for different uh, different time frame, you will see a different kind of pattern okay so in weekly chart you can see in the highlighted area the chart is, uh, is moved in okay on daily chart you can see there's a lot of noise a lot of peaks and a lot of troughs so uh, it's harder to uh, to determine okay the information in daily chart because there's a lot of noises so normally uh, we go for different time frame so to determine the uh, major trend okay 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 so can you tell us uh, what are the different types of charts that we have available in uh, chart things okay uh, in charts uh, basically there are three commons you charge use chart in uh, technical analysis la. so the first one will be the line chart okay the line chart so for the line chart it is the most basic uh, chart of all okay because you see there's only one line in the chart so basically it connects all the closing price okay in a period of time so you can see it, it plotted out uh, a single line uh, for the technical guy to analyze okay so it doesn't really like uh, show that every intraday information in the daily line chart because it only have the uh, closing price information but some uh, sometimes as a technical guy okay we want to like filter out all the noises like the daily high and lows so we will use the line chart to determine the so-called trend okay tell us the closing price now That bar it represents the daily high low okay it can be a weekly high low it depends on the time frame okay it de depends on the time frame but the high the, the vertical line it shows the high and the low in a certain period of time depends on the person using it okay so for the horizontal line okay the horizontal dash line on the left it shows the open price okay and on the right it will show the closing price so uh, this, this is how the bar chart is drawn okay so for the coloring so if the uh, closing price is higher than the opening price if you show it is a uh, up -up. Okay. the color will be shaded in green color or sometimes black color okay and vice versa if the closing price is lower than the open price then it is a down day 
or a down wick. Okay, so it will be shaded in a red color or sometimes um, maybe other color. Okay, but normally it will be shaded in red color. All right. So they also, uh, there's also a third type of chart that is more popular. We yeah. call it candlestick chart. I heard this chart comes from the eastern side, right? The bar chart comes from the western side. Yes, 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 yes. So uh, the candlestick chart originated from Japan over like 300 years ago. And in that time, Japan, they use it to like record it down the rice contract. Okay, but now it's quite popular to use among like traders and investors. Okay, so uh, 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 how can this look like? Okay, you can see uh, it's a little bit thicker and it looks like a, really like a candle. That's why they call it a candlestick. Okay, so similarly, it has also a vertical line or we call it an, a wick. Okay, a wick on the upper side or you can see there's a side but the vertical line it shows the trading range of a period so if you are in a day so it's a daily high and a daily low so when you are in a weekly chart so it shows the weekly high and the weekly lows okay and it goes on all right so as for the bar the white bar or you can see it as a bullish, okay, it represents the difference between open and close. Okay, whenever the open and close is different, okay, you will see a rectangular shape. Okay. So if open price and the closing price is the same, then you will not see any uh, white bar or the rectangular shape in the candlestick. All right. So and for the color, uh, when the price is up, which means the closing price is higher than the open price, then uh, the, the bar, the white bar, will be shaded in either white color or green color. Okay. And the other one, if the price, the closing price is lower than the open price, then uh, candlestick bar will be a down day or a down bar. Lah. So the down bar will be in either or red. Okay, so uh, when you read the chart, especially like candlestick chart, so you know when you see the green color, then it is an uh, up day. And when you see a red color, it is a down day. All right. All right. So, uh, so this candlestick chart looks very similar to a uh, to a bar chart, except that it has a bobby. Yes, right? correct, correct. And uh, it is more, uh, it is more used in the Asian countries, while a bar chart is more used in the Western countries. Mm -hmm. So that's different. But I think now, if you mostly, I think most people will also start to adopt more of the candlestick charts. Right yes, now. true, true. Yeah. So before we proceed, let's just do another poll, all right? So let's see if you are, uh, let me see, are you able to pay attention? So let's do a, uh, let me launch a poll right now. So on your screen, you see, uh, just pick which of this would be your favorite chart or is already your favorite chart. So please tell us like, are you more, uh, use more light chart or do you use more bar chart or use more candlestick charts? Okay. We have 60% uh, wow. of you voted. Mm. Okay. All right, give you another five more seconds. Okay, let me close the poll and share the result with you. All right, 89% of you like to use candlestick, 3% of you like to use bar chart, about 8% of you like to use line chart. So that is our uh, survey outcome. 
Okay, so uh, let me carry on. Okay, so now, right now, we have already learned about the different type of charts. So can you share with us how do we read charts? All right, okay. So when you know the basic of the charts, like I see most of you like candlestick, uh, candlestick chart. So um, how we read the chart is very, very important. All right, so how do we read it? So first, we need to know something very important, okay? We need to understand the market structure. So what is a market structure? Okay, so basic market structure has four key swing points, okay? This is very important. Please bear in mind. Please listen carefully. Four. So the first one, one so called higher high. So, what is higher high? So, in the chart, when you see the peaks, okay, when the price moves along the uh, uh, the, the okay, time, so each peak is higher than the previous one, then it is named. You can see from the drawings, there's three higher high here. Okay, one is higher than the other, so three higher highs. So this is one of the key swing point. Okay, so the other one, one we call high. Okay, even though it is the drops, okay, it is so uh, it is still a higher low. So key swing higher high, then high low, higher high, higher low. So when the low is higher last low point then it is named higher low okay so from the drawings you can see there are three higher highs and three higher higher lows so uh one set of higher highs higher lows okay a sequence of higher highs and higher lows will form uh form a sort of some sort of a of trend so uh, the second one, uh, when the high is going down, okay, compared to the previous peak is going down, so we call it lower highs. So from the drawings, you can see there is uh, there there are two high uh, two lower highs, and last one will be the lower low. So what is lower low? So from the name itself, uh, literally, the low is lower than the previous low, then we call it the lower low. So from the drawing, there is one lower low, okay? So when a sequence show, uh, when a sequence of higher highs and higher lows, it will form um, a trend, okay? So, uh, this is the basic stuff uh, you need to know when you want to read a chart. Okay, so can you tell us a little bit more about trend? Or right. when there is a uh, a sequence of higher highs and higher lows, it will form a trend. And also, when there's a sequence of higher uh, lower high and lower lows, they also form a trend. So what we call it? Okay, so. Uh, this is the second part when you need to read a chart, okay? When you know the market structure, then you identify the trend with the higher highs and higher low. So first, we look at the uptrend, all right? We look at the uptrend. So for a price to go to the uptrend, the price need to continuously to create higher hold, uh, higher lows and, and high tone in the drawings. Okay, so from the drawing itself, you can see there are two higher highs, higher low. When there are one, uh, there are at least two higher highs and two higher lows, an uptrend it forms. Okay, so when there is an uptrend. The previous higher low 
will act as a support. So for the support case, we will talk later. Okay, but uh, bear in mind, in an uptrend, when the price and the higher lows will act as a support. Okay, so as long as when the price go and the reverse and break through the higher lows, which is the support, then it potentially um, signifies that it is a ch change of trend. Uh. Okay. So next, this is a real case, a uh, real case which is a candlestick chart. Okay, candlestick chart, a simple one. Okay, and it has a very clear higher highs and higher lows. Okay, from the chart. So when you see it, a uh, higher high, higher lows, then without any other supporting indicators, then you will know that the price is actually trending up. Okay. So as for downtrend, it is similar to the uptrend, but only that when the price continue to create like lower highs and lower lows, then you will see a downtrend. Okay, so it is exactly uh, similar to the uptrend. Okay, just the reverse case. You will see two lower highs and two lower lows, at least two. Then it will become a downtrend. Okay, so similarly, the previous lower high will act as a resistance. Okay, so resistance, we will talk this about, uh, about this topic later. But bear in mind, this important thing is that in the trend, when there's a lower high, then each lower high will become the next. and two higher lows, then you will know that the trend has successfully uh, turned around. All right. And the third one, okay, there are three trends, so-called trends. Okay. okay. Trend, so one more is the uh, case of a downtrend. Okay, so this is the downtrend a simple case of a downtrend in a candlestick chart. Okay, so it's, it also show, show a simple, uh, a clear movement of higher lows and lower lows along the way. So without any other indicator support, okay, you will know that the price is actually trending down. Okay, so let's talk about uh, the last one, the sideways. So, uh, for sideways, it's a bit tricky, okay? If when there is uh, the peaks and drops that doesn't really form the higher highs, lower lows, or the lower high or, low, uh, or higher lows, then uh, the trend might be going sideways. Okay, side there. So when the peaks and the drops, you see it and you connect it together, okay, then you will form a, some sort like a horizontal rectangular shape. Okay, we call it the sideway. Lah. Okay, so the peaks, when you connect it together, it will become the uh, resistance level. Well, I showed it in the red color line. And for the drops, you connect it the together, okay, that touches the most point, it will become the support level, okay. 
So I show it in the green color line. And if either way, okay, when the price actually breaks through the level, then we call it um, a breakout. Lah, okay, in either way, directionally breakout, then it will potentially show that it might go into an uptrend. Okay, but also if you need to confirm that it is an uptrend, so you need to see that there's two higher highs and two higher lows. Uh, and the same time, if it goes through, uh, it breaks through the support line, then you need to confirm that it has turned into a uh, uh, decline, a uh, downtrend, then you need to see that there's two uh, lower highs and two lower lows. Okay. So this in this is part of the okay example also um, candlestick chart okay I find it uh, quite difficult to find it uh, because in the market basically most most of the time uh, price is not moving so most of the time the price is not trending so it's quite hard to find a perfect one to uh, let you guys to see uh. so i found one so uh, from the chart itself you can see that um there's no clear higher highs and no clear higher lows and also lower low or higher low okay but it moves sideways so when you connect the points you will find the uh, two lines and it show that it's like a uh, horizontal way of rectangular shape okay so the side way so that is side way and yeah. sometimes side way people also give it another name like some people call it the consolidation period. yes correct correct consolidation correct. period or range bound these are some yeah. terms that people use to describe the charts when they talk about side way maybe they they want to mean side way but they say range bound so that means that it's going to reach yes yes yeah so this so i think this is probably good for trading you can, you can buy at the range low and break sell at the range high you know yes yeah so about before we proceed just want to launch another poll to see if you are uh, paying attention so on your screen right now we are just uh, showing you another poll so a series of low lows and low high is a please answer the question okay to see if you are paying attention or not i give you another uh, 15 seconds to uh answer the poll All right, let me close the poll and share the result with you. Well, 93% uh, of you pick downtrend, while 7% of you pick sideways. The correct answer is a downtrend. All right, so 90% of you didn't pay attention or just simply them back. Okay, <laughs> so yeah, thank you so much for uh, participating. Um, let me go back to the slide. So right now, Ken, you share with us uh, what is a, a, a market structure and what is the different types of charts. So there's one more important thing that we want to explore today, which is uh, a very key levels that many of the technical analysts is looking at, which are support and resistance. So it is what are support and what are resistance? Yes, yes. All right. So back to uh, how to read a chart. Okay. So the third thing that is important when you read a chart is to look for lines of and receive okay so uh, just now when i talk about the uptrend the downtrend and sideways uh, basically i touch the support and resistance briefly okay so you know that uh, simply when there's uh, an uptrend and there's an out there's a downtrend you will find you will know where to find the support and resistance really a support and resistance Okay, so uh, put it in a simply way, okay, simple way, uh, and support is a price level in which the buyer is actually uh, much larger than the seller, and it is consistent, okay, consistent, which means 
uh, when the buyer actually like um, like match with the seller and the seller keep coming up okay keep coming to like sell it the supply is quite strong uh, okay quite strong at that point of uh, at the level at that price level so it will show that if the buyer is much higher than the seller then that level point will be the support okay uh, a drawing here so on a downtrend okay okay so quick questions yeah Okay. You ask me or ask the audience? Yeah, <laughs> uh, ask you because uh, just now there's the likes. Ninety-seven percent of people uh, know that. Uh, what is the downtrend? So, can you spot that? Is this a downtrend? Uh, well, it looks like it is a downtrend, but it's well supported by uh, that level and yeah. the lower uh, lower low. Yeah, correct. Okay. As you can see, um, the price is actually going down. And the lower highs, uh, not really forming, but it's going to, okay, it's going to. But then you can see that um, I purposely like put on the B, B stand for buyers and S stand for sellers. And obviously B is quite high, okay, the higher number and also bigger, okay. And that point, uh, that level, uh, there's a lot of buyer actually supporting okay when the price is going down a lot of people want to sell but at the same time a lot of buyer trying to uh, take the shares from the seller okay supporting at the level okay even though the price is going down okay so the price did not go down then uh, on the first level you will find it uh, a support lot okay then next when the price actually like um, rebounded, okay, rebounded above, and then go down again. So when the price rebound, okay, the seller might uh, stop for a while because they thought maybe, okay, maybe um, uh, I have a better price to sell, so they stop it. So when the price go down again, then this seller are afraid afraid that they cannot sell it at a better price, so they sell again. But those buyer who really miss out the first dip, okay, will be pressured to buy it on the second one. Okay, so those buyer will come in to support again. So it will form like a two point at the same level, at least slightly the same level, that level will become a, a stronger support, okay. So at the end, okay, when the price rebound again, so those sellers who want to sell actually uh, already sell it on the second dip. Okay, so on the third one, uh, the seller pressure has really like um, normalized. Okay, so when the buyer comes in again, so actually they can uh, push the price point even higher because not really much seller willing to sell at the lower price at the support price okay not enough seller to push the price down to the support anymore okay so when the buyer comes in again then you will see a higher low okay from here onwards and then when the price break out then the trend the uptrend will start forming okay so this is the support point Okay, so all the way you will see buyer is quite is higher than the seller. Okay, this is what we call a support. Okay, right, so that's support. So uh, on a real case, as you can see, uh, the green line is the support, and the, the first dip. Okay, you can see the first dip. I draw a line over there, then. It rebounds and drop again. So when the price touches that point, those who really miss out the first point will come into support. Okay, we actually come into support, and then when the price go up again and come down, though we uh, those seller that really trap above wanted to sell quickly, then they throw again. But then uh, those that miss out the second point will come into support the third point. 
Okay, so if the level point did not really uh, break through, okay, it shows that below that level point, there's a lot of buyer really uh, digesting the seller, okay, digesting the seller. The press, okay, this uh, selling pressure has been normalized, then the buyer can start buying it all the way up. So from the price point, you can see that once the price has been supported at that level like uh, three to four times, then the price start to go into an uptrend. Okay, so uh, this is one way of to trade the support. Okay. So we have a like invisible hand around that level. And yes, so correct, correct. Like uh, previously, maybe I missed, I wanted to buy at maybe uh, two ringgit. And then now I see the share price go up to two ringgit, I buy again. So there are a lot of buyers queuing at a certain level that prevents the price from dropping below that. Yeah, uh, there's also uh, another way of saying it. Uh, either to kill it or we call it a hidden buyer, the invisible hand. Yeah. So when uh, they saw the buyer, willing to sell it, then the price keep coming in without queuing. They see the price, uh, they see the the share that has been queued at a certain point, they ate it all the way up. Okay. That's the way I sell it. Okay. Ah, no, okay. All right. All right. Okay. Uh, so, the resistance. resistance. Yes, yeah. yes. So let's explore what is resistance. So, um, resistance is basically the opposite of support, obviously. Okay, so if the level point, uh, the level has more seller than the buyer, which is consistent, then that level will become a resistant level. Okay, from the drawing itself, you can see that uh, at certain point, when the seller uh, keep coming out, either, um, because in our BUSA, um, they are shortest, okay? They are also those that take profits, okay? Also sellers. So at certain point, uh, at certain level, when this seller keep coming out, okay? They want to sell, eagerly want to sell. Then when the buyer uh, want to buy all the way up, but because of the selling pressure is much higher than the buying pressure. So the price point cannot break through and it start to overwhelm the buyers and turn it, the price will start to turn down. Okay, so, but of course, uh, this buyer will not give up. Okay, so we try again and try again, buy all the way up to that level. And then this seller keeps selling again maybe some of the buyer has already turned into the seller. They want to take profits, okay? So that point has a lot of um, selling pressure and the buying force is not enough to overcome it. So the second time it failed and it turned again. So at that level point, it become a stronger seller, uh, selling point, okay? So time, they say the third is the charm, okay, third is the charm. But, but then again, it cannot break through. Then the seller which actually kill at the resistant level are afraid, okay, are afraid that maybe uh, the price will not touch that level again. So those eagerly want to sell, uh, want to sell investor or traders, they will start to queue lower. So making it the resistant level uh, even stronger. Okay, so uh, those buyer see that hey, the first time it cannot break through, the second time I want to break through but cannot, but the third time they uh, they do not want to buy all the, uh, all the way up again. So making it uh, the price point at the level become a resistant and the price cannot reach it and start to turn down. So we can see that the resistance level is more like a, like a range, okay? Like a range, like a zone, like a zone, okay? So this is one of the example I can find, a real example. So on the 
candlestick chart as you can see from the left to the right the first time it hits the level and it turns okay you can see the the price are trying to uh, break out with a large candlestick bar which uh, signify that there is uh, there are quite a lot of buyers trying to the level the seller consistently sell it down okay then the second time again and the third time again the fourth time again and the fifth time again so making it that a floor and a resistance like a ceiling yeah yes so what happens if this thing right? are broken oh okay so what if the the resistor point or the support point is broken yeah. okay breakout. yeah we call it the breakup yeah, yeah exactly shane is correct so uh let's see about the uh, support breakdowns okay when price break down below the support okay below the support it will become uh and resistant okay it will become a new resistant so like i said on the support point the first support point a lot of buyer uh holding that level and the second times those that miss out the first time support again but then on the third time it fails then those uh supporters those buyers that bought recently, uh, they bought uh, previously to support that level, will turn into seller again because they need to cut loss. And when they want to cut loss, they want to break even, cut loss and a break even point. So basically, whatever they buy, they want to sell at the same price. So hence, it will become a resistance because when the price uh, reach that level, those previous buyer will become the seller to pressure the price. Okay, so this is the uh, support point, so uh, support to resist support. So the role and support level could be interchange, see which one is uh, uh, broken first, right? Yes, correct, correct. Yeah, so sometimes support can be resistance, sometimes resistance can be a support. Once mm -hmm. it's broken, it turns the other way around. Yes, correct. So that's why uh, whenever there's a breakdown or support, we call it a bearish signal. Yeah, because the support is really broken. Or yeah. You become resistance to prevent the prices from going upward. Yes, correct, uh, correct. So every time you see support is broken, it could probably mean that you should or cut loss. Yes, uh, that is the signal. All right. So uh, this is one of the case, a uh, very good case. Okay, so you can see that um, from the left to the right, okay so the, the price level which are uh, the price support level which is in green color okay got supported at the first time and the third time then when it breaks through okay break down uh, will uh increase okay so whenever the price reverse or rebound after the breakdown okay it will become a strong resistance so you can see the last arrow which is pointing down all right uh, that is uh, the same support level which is now become the resistance level and after it fails to break through again then the price fall all the way down okay because probably uh, probably those buyers that support previously are afraid that the price will not go to their price again so uh, all the buyers turn to seller and sell uh, aggressively. Come, you see below, the price plunge uh, rapidly. All right. So the next one is uh, resistance breakout. Okay, similar to support. Okay, similar to support. When actually break through the resistance, Okay, because those sellers that actually sell at the first time, okay, then those that actually miss 
to sell at the first time, sell at the second time, thought that they actually sell at the high level. They are very happy until the price actually breaks through the resistance. Okay, so when it breaks through the resistance, actually it will pressure the previous seller to buy back again because they do not want the potential trend change. Okay, so when it comes to the same level, which is now become the support, those previous seller, we want to buy at the same price they sell. Okay, so similar psychology. Okay, similar psychology, so that uh, they will buy at the same point. So making the resistance become the support level now. Okay. So a breakout will signify a dominance of a buyer, which means those sellers who want to sell are clear up by the buyer. So which means a dominance of buyers. So that's why when there's a basically a bullish buy signal. Okay. So this is uh, an example of the breakout. Okay, a live case. So uh, from the left to read it from the left to the right. So from the left is resistance level. Okay, resistance level which have haven't been big through until on the middle point it breaks out then it turns down again then you see that there's one support okay break up then pull back to the same level then it hold okay it holds so the resistance turn support level actually works so when it breaks out again and it pull back and it also stand above the uh, previous previous resistance level. So the uh, resistance turn to support works. Okay. And also for the resistance breakout, as you can see in the at the middle, when it breaks out, pull back, did not break down again, then it will go up again. So from the chart itself, you will see this uh, uh sorry, they are higher highs and higher lows making it an uptrend okay after breaking out the resistance okay every time it breaks out and resistance it will start to form a higher highs and higher lows okay okay so that is about the breakout uh, from support and resistance okay so uh, before we proceed just launch another poll Okay, so on your screen, you ask the questions. So if the share price breaks the support level, it is usually a bullish signal or a bearish signal. Okay, please take your time to answer the question. Okay, if the share price breaks the support level, is it bullish or is it bearish? Okay, I give you another 10 more seconds to think and reconsider your answer. Okay, time's up. Let me share with you the answer, okay? 80% of you say that it is a bullish signal, while 82% of you say it is a bearish signal. So the answer is, the bearish signal. It is a bearish signal. So majority of you get it right. Okay, well, the 18% of you who pick a bullish signal, it is actually bearish because once the support is broken, uh, then support will turn out to become a resistance. So it is usually a bearish signal. Okay, so uh, let me go back to uh, the slide. So can you tell us about the, the breakout on how we can we can do a uh, use breakout to see uh, whether we should is a bearish or is a no. because sometimes you see that some resistance is very strong, but sometimes some resistance is very weak. You know, it can be easy broken. 
could tell us some support can be very weak. So could you tell us how do we identify which one is strong and which one is weak? Yeah, sure. All right. Okay. So um, let's put it this way. So uh, in support, uh, support and resistance, there's a strengthness of it. Okay. A put it and weak and middle and uh, strong one. Okay. So for a um, weak resistance or support, normally it is um, a consolidation of a small candle. So they put it this way. So whenever there's a small candle, okay, small candle like this example, okay. So uh, this is the daily chart, okay. So you can see I may put the uh, rectangular shape at the small consolidation area, okay. So this type of consolidation, which comprises of a few small candle, we call it a weak support or a weak resistance. So why so? Because, uh, like I said, if the support, there are a lot of buyer, and when the price go back to that level, those that miss out the first, uh, the first one or actually sell it at that level will buy back. So, if the um, the case is true, okay, then uh, as long as that level has a lot of trading, uh, trading appears at that level, then there will be a lot of participants like the buyer and seller. So when the price go back to that level, they will uh, this this and come back into the market. So when there is only a few candlestick, it means that the traded uh, traded level actually quite low. So when the price go back up, those that want to sell actually has already sell or already bought in. So making it uh, quite weak. Lah. So you can see uh, when price went back to the small consolidation level, some holes, some doesn't hold. So it's suitable for those who actually do short term trading, okay, on weak support and resistance. Actually, uh, really short term, like a small swing, like a few days swing, or maybe contra, then you can look for the weak support and resistance, okay. So uh, for the moderate one, okay, so similarly, it also uh, can be a consolidation pattern of candlestick, but this time we see it larger, okay, in a larger scale, okay. So, or you can say it, uh, it is a brief sideways trading range pattern for at least maybe a month or even less, okay. <clears throat> so, from the example, so you can see this is also a daily chart. But the daily chart, you can see from the left to the right, uh, the rectangular shape, I pull it, you can see instead of a few days or maybe a week of candles that has consolidating, okay, uh, this one, it has more than a month or maybe a month of time of consolidation. We uh, moderate support or a moderate resistant level. So on this case, you can see at the level, okay, not necessarily the higher high point, the price, when the price go to that consolidation uh, zone, there are a lot of selling uh, pressure going on. So making it, if you look at the candle itself, you can see most of the time when the price go up, uh, the candle will show a red color, which means that
support and resistance. So normally we see a very long handle, uh, like a strong, uh, a long range bar, a long range bar. Normally we, uh, we see it with the volume, but in this case, we only see the uh, long handle bar or a very, very long sideway pattern that lasts maybe a few months or few years, multiple years, okay? So, so uh, case, I put it in a weekly chart because it's too long, I cannot put it in a, in a daily chart that you can see, okay? So on this weekly chart, you can see that there's a few things we learned just now, okay? So the black color line is the support and also the resistance line, okay? So that resistance line can at uh, the IPO price level, per year's high level, or um, a certain uh, consolidation, strong consolidation level. So from this example, you can see I draw it at the um, IPO price level, okay? So at this level, it has more than 10 years history, okay? So when the price actually broken the resistance level from the left to the right, okay, read it from the left to the right. When it break it through, then you can see that there's a strong rally going, okay? Maybe multiple years of uh, rally. Then after that, it makes a top, then start to go down. Then you start to see the lower high and lower lows. Then it go all the way down to that level. Okay, that level like a zone. Okay, so the price hit that level, rebounded. So hit that level again, multiple years. Uh, sorry, next year need the uh, hit the level again and rebounded and hit the level the third time the consequent years, okay, and rebounded again. So making it a very very strong uh, support level. But similarly, when the price rebounded, uh, rebounded from the right hand uh, right side of the chart, you can see that. There's a close to three years resistance level, okay, which is also a very strong resistance level. Every time it rebounded, it cannot break through and it turn it down again and go up again and turn down again. And then it become a, what do you call it? A sideway, okay, because you cannot see a clear higher highs and clear higher low or lower high or lower low. So this is what we call a sideway. So from the weekly chart, this one, you can see that uh, a few things we learned uh, just now. Uh, there's one support to resistance, then a breakout resistance, okay? And also a very strong uh, support level and also a trading range, or we call it a sideway, okay? All right, so that is about the strength of a support or a resistance. So if it's a small candle, it is probably a weak support resistance. And if it's on a big time frame and it is important key level, mm. it's likely to be a strong support and mm. resistance on a bigger time frame. So that is from uh, Ken Chow about the strength of support and resistance. So before we go to our question and answer section, let me launch um, another poll. All right. So when we see consolidation made out of small candles, it is usually weak, moderate, or strong. Please uh, state your answer. In the meantime, if you have um, if you have any question, please write it in our question box. Okay, so. If any question, please write in our question box. So we will um, we will uh, go through the questions to you.
All right. All right, so well, I'm closing the poll right now. So my share with you the, um, the result, okay? So 93% of you say it's weak support resistance, 3% of you say it's moderate support resistance, and 4% of you say it's strong support resistance. The answer is the yeah, weak one. Weak one because it's a small candle. So 93% yeah. of you got it right. All right, so let me just, uh, hide the poll right now and uh, wait. okay let me go to which is the question and answer sessions okay so so the first question we have is just now can we talk about the three charts right the line chart which tracks the closing price the bar chart that that is invented by the western uh, uh, chartist and the candlestick which is invented by the asian uh, chartist okay uh, so how about this chart called tick chart? Tick charts. Do you personally study that or do you use that? Uh, well, um, tick charts. If I did not read it uh, mystically, uh, normally we use it in uh, highly uh, we call it highly traded, uh, highly traded companies, uh, highly traded stock. Okay. Else we usually do not use the tick chart okay okay so um so that answer the questions so the next is um is support resistant a line or is it a zone can you tell us about it yeah i will say it is a zone all right uh for the example for the sake of easier to understand i draw it as a line but actually you can see it as a zone so uh because normally uh, the price doesn't really uh, in real case doesn't really like touch the line exactly sometimes it's higher than the line sometimes it's lower than the line okay so normally you can give it like a few ticks okay few ticks up and few ticks down to make it like a zone or you can use the consolidation area as the support or resistance so remember it is a zone okay so it is important to know that uh, when the price hit the zone what is the response of the buyer and the seller then you can make the decision of your trading okay so you can respond to the uh, market reaction okay all right so it is a zone okay so next is what time frame do you recommend for intraday or contraday well, actually, using the intraday or T bus three, uh, normally we will use the uh, minute charts. Okay, depending on the frequency of the trading. Okay, frequency it means that uh, how uh, highly traded is the stock. If it's really highly traded, maybe you can go down to five minutes or even one minutes. But I highly doubt that in malaysia as that those really highly tra traded stock okay normally five minutes or 15 minutes is sufficient but of course we can even cross check okay cross check the uh, multiple time frame like for example uh, mm -hmm. you are doing the um uh, short term okay if we are doing like daily chart we will cross check with the weekly chart because we are looking for a strong support and resistance level okay so for your case maybe the daily chart the chart board is your intraday chart strong support okay if you get what i mean okay so that's my answer for you okay all right um uh, next is is there any good software that will allow us to plot and draw the support line or resistance line any software yeah, yeah good software trading software or charting software you know you can recommend well if i i'm i did not like um misread your your questions uh, if you're not talking about automate uh, support and resistance uh, software uh, that draw it for you then i believe there's a lot of free uh, software in the market 
which I'm not sure if I should like disclose it here. Uh, all right, all right. It's, 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 it's fine. I mean, for, for, for me, the, one of the free software that I use is chat messages. All right. Yeah. So you can, you can, you can uh, uh, go to find out more about it. So the next is also about recommendation, like which um, screener uh, do you uh, recommend us you know, to, to read charts? Okay, that is. Well, I believe there's a lot of uh, brokers uh, that provides uh, the right screener for you. You can ask for your broker's uh, platform. Okay, and I not okay to like disclose the uh, broker's name. Uh, yeah, you can, you can uh, check with your broker. I think most brokers yeah. will have uh, their own internal uh, uh, well, in uh, you can also like um, look at the Busa, Busa marketplace. There's yeah. also a screener. Correct. But as long as you know what you are finding, looking for, I think the screener can be sufficient uh, for you to find the right stock. Yeah. Um, on Busa marketplace uh, dot com, all right, which is uh, a featured uh, the, on the backdrop today. We have the fundamental screener, which will allow you to pick stock based on their market cap, based on the EPS growth, dividend yield, and, and so on. And there is one screener for you to uh, filter it fundamentally. And there's also a charting software for you to chart the graph. So on Bursa Marketplace, you have this free of charge. Okay, you can go to Bursa Marketplace. All right. So um, in the chart, right? It is often like what it, it often uh, mean that what had ha happened in the past. So how do we use the charts to try to forecast or predict the future trend? Well, there's a theory about that. That um, same uh, how they say it, the Dow's theory. Yeah. Uh, the Dow's theory. Yeah, yeah. That whatever so, happened at the past will happen again. History repeats. Yeah, itself. the hi history repeats itself, but it will be not the, exactly the same. So uh, normally uh, we can look at the history, like any other uh, other case other than technical analysis. We also can look at the history, see how it happens. It might happens again, okay, but might not uh, with the same situation, okay. But probably some reason behind is the same. So we can look at the past to see how the uh, price react to certain things. Okay, how the price react to certain price level. So you can know that whether that point is the resistance level or um, support level, or to uh, how the price react to certain events. Okay, so this is how you can read the chart in the historical point of view. Okay. Yeah, well, um, uh, certainly, if I may add on, is that certain uh, uh, most of the uh, things that we read is based on based on chart things or technical analysis principles are based on the Dow theory, like the history repeats itself. We believe that the, the likely, uh, the, the same behavior will likely to manifest again if the same uh, scenario happens. So, because uh, uh, people, we believe that markets are emotional at certain price level, it will be more. Uh, sensitive uh, is more fluctuative and uh, but of course there are also uh, some of you may say that oh this is what happened in the past that moving average a bit more lagging but when it comes to forecasting the future uh, usually people look at uh, more uh, a pretty indicator or people look at uh, chart patterns because chart patterns tend to be a, a leading indicator and also the candlestick yes correct correct tend to look at it like it could lead for the future instead of looking at indicators like RSI, stochastic, that is probably lagging in nature. So that's just something that I want to add on if you feel that it is similar. Yes, yes, yes. So, so next is uh, how about uh, Hagen Nash uh, Shia? Have you have you learned about that and uh, is it useful for the stock market? Yes, it's useful. It is really useful. Yeah, turned out a lot. Of yeah, things, right? it uh, really filter out a lot of noises, but uh, similarly, uh, every chart that you use, you need to understand the logic behind it, okay, so that you know uh, how it really changes. But for the Hanshi Hagenashin, uh, for me, it's quite good uh, 
um, quite good indicator. Do, okay. do you personally use it? Yeah, I do use it, but I mostly I use it in uh, certain stocks. Certain stocks. Yeah, what I kind of stocks. I use it in those like um, maybe not highly traded, highly Ill traded, illiquid yeah, kind, yeah, of. illiquid kind of, or it has a lot of noises, so it can filter it out. Okay, filter it out, so you know that uh, it potentially it will show a trend, uh, change of trend. Okay, from the uh, the candle itself, uh, from the husky husky mm, itself. Okay. So the next question is, how do you check whether there are more buyers or seller at the end of the, the day? You know, if, isn't that the same now? Unbroking and worth selling. So the well, uh, transaction happens where they are, this buyer are willing to sell this to a same. Uh, same, same seller, you know. So when the transactions, how, how do we know that there are more more seller or more buyer? Uh, well, uh, this is kind of out of the topic, but um, normally uh, the volume and also in the uh, we call it the traded uh, trade uh, call it the uh, trade information. Okay, which is uh, we, which you can find it in the uh, uh, trading platforms. Okay, you can see it the uh trade sorry trading details okay so you can see that uh, there are a lot of buying and selling at certain price of level okay sometimes in trading stance uh, we use the uh, what we call the VWAP okay the volume weighted trade uh, volume weighted average price as a more accurate level to we see uh, to see it as a support or a resistance level for short term trading okay so uh, this is how we see it uh. but also there's a a few ways to uh, to see it like for example uh, historical uh, time of uh, is historical uh, point okay we see the level whether that level has more uh, more selling uh, behavior going on or not like for example like price going to that level it turned down again then it indicates that there's more seller okay then it go up again then it turned down so which means that level will actually like trigger seller to sell at the level so it also signifies that there are a lot of seller waiting to sell at that point okay so this is how we uh, analyze it all right so the next question is for long-term investor what type of chart should we be using like what time frame should it be a weekly time frame or is a daily time frame uh this is a a good uh what it got a simple and difficult questions a simple and a difficult yeah, question okay yeah because like i said uh my profile I, I'm a techno fundamentalist, okay, which means I see multiple things and I add it on the odds of uh, winning the stocks. So if purely on technical, okay, I would say that prob uh, probably um, you can look at um, weekly chart, important, uh, important, what we call the support level and also some other um chart patterns okay to identify whether the price has already bottomed okay so uh, these are the ways to uh, if you are using pure technical analysis of okay, point and to buy it okay all right so the next question is how powerful do you think support and resistance compared to other technical indicate don't say that uh, one is better than the other because both can be used uh, concurrently okay because uh, support it has uh, its limit okay and technical indicators has also the downside but if you can combine both of it then it will become powerful okay because you are adding the odds of each indicators and support and resistance together 
All right. All right. So which of the few leading indicators that you trust and utilize? Few, okay. Um, basically, I can con consider an action trader. The price action trader. Yeah, price action trader. But I also use uh, moving average, okay, to help me to identify the trends earlier than uh, the normal structure. Okay, so uh, basic indicators, I think, is insufficient for me to identify. Insufficient. Uh, sufficient. Sufficient. Yeah, sufficient for me to identify whether the change, uh, the trend is changing. So MA la. Yeah, MA. Which, which like which time, which period? I'm doing in uh daily charts. Yeah, using daily yeah, charts. I'm using the daily charts because how many I, days? How many days? I mean, uh, the, the period for the. Is it SME or is it EMA? If okay. Us. Yeah, I'm using the EMA and I'm also oh, EMA. using yeah, EMA and I'm also using the weighted average, weighted moving average. We call it the uh, WMA. Oh, wow. Yeah, um, actually, it depends on uh, how you use it. So I'm not saying that uh, WMA is better than EMA or SMA. As long as you know what you are using and how it benefits you, uh, then either you use uh, SMA or EMA or WMA, then it also will benefit you as long as you know what you are doing. Okay, but for myself, I'm using EMA and, S and also WMA. And I depends on chart patterns, uh, price action, and uh, moving average to determine uh, whether there's opportunities to trade or not. Mm, I see, all right. So, um, <clears throat> when it comes to this, I think this is a little bit out of the discussion today, but if you don't mind, the, here is the question, okay? When it comes to futures trading, trading futures contract, what type of indicator is, I, I, would you recommend in, in the TA? Well, I, I think the best one, I, I'm not saying the best one. It, it should be on my case, I basically use the simple one, moving average is enough. Moving average is enough. Because it depends on your trading system. Your trade works, then um, any indicator you put in, it works. Okay, if it doesn't work, even there's a leading one or a lagging one or whatever indicator that is so powerful and um, without a, a trade system that it works. All right, so the next question is, uh, does volume influence on the fact, the technical indicator? Yes, I do think so. You do think so? Right? Yeah, how, how does it like for example, the support and resistance. So for a stock that has not traded much, okay, meaning that uh, the, the buyers or the sellers index stock uh, very little, then you cannot really um, use the normal support and resistance uh, to do trading because it doesn't really work, okay? The support is so strong because there are a lot of traders or a lot of buyers at that level supporting it. But when there are a lot, uh, a few buyers or a few uh, sellers at the resistance level, then it means that it doesn't really work. It can jump it, uh, it can break out, then it can come back again. Break out, come back again. So the normal level is the most. All right. So the next question is, how many day period you use for EMA? And also how many day period you use for WMA and why WMA? So that's the question. Okay, how many days? So normally EMA, uh, EMA uh, is, uh, we call it exponential moving erasure. So normally EMA is quite, um, sensitive okay sensitive to the current uh, recent data okay and for wma because it's weighted 
on that uh, period of time, okay, they spread it out the weightage uh, throughout the days, the data. So it's a bit uh, slower, but it can filter out more noise. So I can say that WMA is more stable. The moving average is more stable, but uh, EMA uh, is more sensitive, but it also can create more noise. Okay, for EMA, I normally use like 21 days, which is uh, also call it a monthly uh, moving average. Okay, and for WMA, I normally use it for a longer dated uh, time. Lah. Okay, so uh, a year, I use it for a year. So in Malaysia, uh, trading days is almost like uh, 200, 40 something, uh, I forgot the exact number, lah. okay, so uh, it's around that, so I do not usually use for 200 days, so even for US market, okay, I do not use for 200 days, because uh, most of the time, all the people say that 200 days are yearly, yearly moving average, but I do not understand why, okay, because what I need to see is a yearly time point so for a yearly time point like for example uh, us market and yearly traded time is likely around 250 days so uh, that's why i use 250 days as a, a yearly line to indicate the data how it moves okay so you use 240 days uh, slightly yeah, more slightly than and you use EMA term period and use uh, for one month and you use WMP for uh, yes, yes correct. Okay, um, so now there's another question on the thing Malaysia. I think today Gunting Malaysia is under the intense spotlight when they intend to uh, when file a lawsuit against uh, uh, Disney, Disney and the uh, 21st Century Fox. So the request is can you help us to analyze Gunting Malaysia charts or not? Well, uh, at least I need a chart first. Okay, no problem. Uh, let me just uh, pull this a, a bit nearer. I'm not sure whether you're familiar with the charting software that I, uh, I use. All right, just make, I just want to make way for you. You know how to use Mac? Um, no. Okay, uh, this is but how you use a mouse pad. <laughs> Are you able to do that? Yeah, but uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, Gunting Malaysia's share price. So let's look at the weekly chart. So at least we need to find the first thing we need to know that how to read a chart. Now you know the market structure and you know that it is obviously a downtrend because higher uh, lower high and lower lows so obviously a downtrend so uh, the third thing you need to see is to look at the support okay the support <clears throat> so on a larger time frame okay you can see that um, maybe you can draw a uh, we call it uh, we want to find the trend line okay no problem it's under uh, drawing tool yes drawing two. okay you want to draw a trend line right yes so draw a trend line okay. oh uh, so draw a trend line so more likely around this area okay so I'm not really familiar with the software. But as you can see, price is actually going down to a longer term trend line area. So I um, will not say that it will hold, okay? But at least you need to see whether uh, the price can actually hold at this level okay so the level is roughly around i think uh, 290 290 around this area like i said it's not purely a line it's a zone 
So we will need to see uh, how the price react to the level, okay, to the level. And also on the horizontal point, okay, so we have the higher lows and uh, we can use the, uh, the line, oh, this one. You want my chart, is it? Uh, sorry. You want my chart, is it? Uh, I want the, not, not line chart, uh, I want the uh, log skill and also the, oh. You want a log skill and then? Yeah, I want to draw a horizontal line. Okay, I, okay, this is a bit skewed. Do you know how to make it back? Okay. Skill us a minute, huh? Uh, if it's not, uh, it cannot be adjusted, then it's fine. All right, if it cannot be adjusted, it's fine. It's yeah, so. Hard to do. Okay, maybe you're not familiar with the software. Yeah, definitely. Okay. Okay, uh, on the horizontal line, if I can draw a horizontal line. It's here. Okay, you just draw. Uh, yeah, it's a horizontal line. Okay. So um, let's find the, uh, so uh, just now we said that the higher low, okay, try the lower high can be acted as um, support line, okay, support line. So we can actually look for um, lower high, that's uh, right, uh, lower high. Okay, lower high level. So probably there's um, some consolidation zone over here. Okay, which is around 260. Around two, okay. Ah, okay, let's see. Because I'm really not familiar with the software, but it's around like 255 to 260. So likely there might be a point that um, the price can be hold at that level. But like I said, instead of buying on the support to be safe, you can actually um, wait for the reaction for the price to react at that zone level. Then only you uh, react to either trade it or uh, buy it for a longer term. Okay, so I'm looking at those price point. Okay, so normally uh, for my approach, I will also look at a lot of other factors to stack my odds, okay, like for example, uh, fundamental. But in this case, I purely use technical. I will say that the support area to first look at whether the um, around 290, whether it can stay or not. Else, we will look at around 260, okay. Of course, there are a lot of other methods to look for the support like for example, uh, Fibonacci's, okay, or other uh, chart patterns, projections, okay, but uh, we will not do that today, okay. So uh, I will use it the simple way, the horizontal support line will look for the support, which is a quite strong consolidation zone, okay, around 260, okay, there's one here around 260, 260, then there's another one around 220, okay? But first we will see whether the 290 can be hold or not, okay? If it does, then it can become a stronger support, okay? Else, then we look for a lower support, okay? So that's my point of view on getting Malaysia. All right, so uh, there's another question to say that, am I, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm, are we right to say that Gunti Malaysia have got more seller than buyer today? So that's a question from the audience. Yes, definitely. All right, so definitely. So uh, right now, 
we have uh, come to the end of the question and answer session. So let me just uh, give a reiterate on a few reminders. Number one, if you trade mid and small cap stocks, you don't have to pay stamp duty for a period of three years, and that is effective on the first March 2018. And uh, and uh, next is if you trade con if you trade ETF and structured words you will also be exempted from paying stamp duty for a period of three years, effective 1st January 2018, all right? So uh, right now, I want to thank all of you for tuning in to our Bursa introductory webinar number four, which is our last introductory webinar. I want to thank our speaker, who is a very renowned speaker from Vinvest, for joining us today and share with us your knowledge in dissecting a chart and in using support and resistance to uh to place your trade and thank you so much kent yeah yeah hope to have uh, more collaboration with you uh, in the future yeah thank all right you. and thanks thank you so much for tuning in and have a wonderful uh rest of the day and this is uh, shane chu signing off yes good night bye 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 bye